taming the ox. You internalize the enlightenment to the point where it can't slip away from you and doesn't run wild. Okay? It follows you. And as wonderful as that is, that cannot be compared to getting on the ox, actually riding it. This is awesome. People are really afraid of this. It's one thing to see the ox, even to catch it, even to sort of get it to be manageable. This is the ox of consciousness, okay? The samgao, samgao, okay? When it comes to riding on the ox, that's scary. Some of you are facing this, <laughs> this stage. If you look carefully, you'll see the ox is going this way. You see the boy? He's playing a flute, quite relaxed, but he's looking the other way. He's riding the ox backwards. Do you understand? There's no informed consent to enlightenment. <laughs> enlightenment is better than you think it is and not nearly what it's cracked up to be. Which one of those did you want to hear? <laughs> both or one, both or neither. Enlightenment is like, is like continually falling off a cliff and being completely comfortable with that. A great and powerful beast carries you. And um, <clears throat> you have to give up your investment with um, where it's going. It's the ultimate act of surrender, riding the ox backwards. The flow of impermanence. Um, you fall, it's like falling down, but you don't fall down. You fall up into existence moment by moment, which is what pratitya samutpada means. It's a falling, but a falling up without any fixation, <laughs> without uh, needing to know uh, what's going to happen next. You simply fall into um, what needs to be done moment by moment. So this might be called the act of true faith, as opposed to belief, which is holding on to something. Faith is uh, uh, letting go of uh, the need to be oriented, the need to have answers. This is surrendering to the flow of expansion and contraction, riding, riding on the wave of the dynamic wave of nothing whatsoeverness and um, letting it carry you. So that's quite a profound act of faith. What comes next? The ox has now carried you home. He's home. Okay? And he's completely at rest. He has found final repose of the spirit in his home. And the ox is gone. Only who he really was remains. <laughs> Just the person. That true, authentic human with no fixated position whatsoever. 
and no more need for a mind as an object. He's home. He rode the ox home, complete enlightenment, nirvana. But there's three more pictures. What could they possibly stand for? Well, if you read the books, they give you various explanations. But um, I was privileged to um, discuss these pictures with a Japanese Zen master many years ago who told me that there's an oral tradition about these 10 pictures that has not been written down, that really it ends here. This is complete enlightenment. This is final repose. Pictures 8, 9, and 10 represent the substance, form, and purpose of enlightenment. Substance in Chinese is called ti, which literally means body. body. Uh, <clears throat> the form um, is called xiang, which means just that, the form or the appearance. And then what it's good for, what it's used for is yong, and that's the application or the use. So ti xiang yong. According to this Roshi's oral tradition, the last three of these ox herding pictures uh, tell us the substance, the appearance, and the ultimate use of enlightenment. So you can hardly wait, right? <laughs> substance is coming up first. What it's made out of, the matter the matter itself. And here is the substance of enlightenment. No substance whatsoever. Right? When the emperor asked Bodhidharma, what is the first principle of holiness? What did Bodhidharma say? <laughs> Wide open and nothing holy. What's the form of enlightenment? The mountains and the cherry blossoms, the ordinary appearances of the world, every single thing, is the appearance of enlightenment. <clears throat> 